Am I dry? Do you ever do that thing where you wash stuff in the sink and the spoon is just at the right angle that when the tap hits it, it just goes all over you? Yeah, that just happened. Hi everyone, it's Tash and welcome to another recipe video. And today we're making one of my favourite sweet Japanese snacks, mitsubashi dango. I first posted this recipe in 2020 on my blog tashcakes.com, but I wasn't actually filming stuff at that time, or I was sporadically, but I wasn't really taking it seriously. I don't take it seriously now, to be honest, but I do do it more regularly. And because everyone and their cat is going to Japan this year, including me, I'm in the mood for some Japanese snacks. I'm always in the mood for Japanese snacks, I'm always in the mood for snacks full stop. Mitarashi Dango comes from Kyoto and it was first sold in a tea shop called Kamo Mitarashi Chaya and it's a sweet and salty sticky rice dumpling snack with traditionally five dumplings on a skewer that have been boiled until they're really chewy and lovely and then they're grilled until they're really crisp and lovely and tasty on the outside but still really squishy on the inside and they're served with a sweet soy sauce sauce cannot wait to go back to Japan later this year. I visited it briefly just for a couple of days because I had a sake making workshop in Kyoto a few years ago and I really missed the street view that the snacks one. This was one of them I really remember and really enjoyed. And lucky for me, it is super fast and super easy to make. So having said that, let's go to the kitchen and see how it's done. The first thing we're going to do is make our dango dough. So here I have 100 grams of silken tofu and I also have 100 grams of glutinous rice flour. And that is literally it for our dango dough, so let's knead this together until it forms a nice smooth dough. Depending on how well drained and dry our tofu is, you might actually need a little more tofu to get the right texture. Mine was actually perfect because I used it straight from the box so it still had enough water in it. Now it's reached the stage that you want in a texture and it's actually called earlobe texture, so if you pinch it, it's kind of like you're pinching your earlobe. So it's soft but still firm. I love that expression, earlobe texture, but that's the texture that you want for your dango. So now we're going to roll it into balls. You can roll them as big or small as you like, but remember when you cook them they're going to expand, so don't do them too big. I'm going to do them about this big, that's more traditional size. I used to do them completely round when I ride make them, but now I actually like to flatten them out just a tiny bit and I find that when it comes to frying these later just makes it a little bit easier. There we go, just a tiny bit. And here we have our dango ready to cook. I made 17 which is a bit of an awkward number I know. If you want to guarantee an even number then you need to weigh the dough itself and then divide it by however many you want. Possibly 18 because that's divisible by 3 and I quite like 3 each on the skewer even though traditionally it's 5. But uh, yes, I couldn't be bothered to measure the dough and I just did it by eye. Anyway, 17 we have, we're going to have one or two left over, we'll see. Anyway, let's get to cooking them. Now I've got a pan of boiling water here now, this is properly boiling. Not a little bit simmering, not a little bit bubbling, properly boiling. And we're basically going to boil our dango until they float. By the way, this isn't all the dango I have. I'm actually going to freeze the rest because they do bag up and freeze quite nicely so I can enjoy these another day. So I'll pop these in the freezer now. Of course, if you are very hungry for dango, then by all means cook all of them. And I'm just going to gently lower these in. And we're going to boil these until they float. That will just take a couple of minutes really. And now they are floating happily, we're going to fish them out and drain them on some kitchen towel. It's just a bit of kitchen paper. Now off the heat, I'm going to add to a pan 50 grams of caster sugar and 12 grams of corn flour. This is going to be our thickening agent. You can also use potato flour. We're also going to add 25 millilitres of light soy sauce. I'm using Japanese Kikaman soy sauce because I find it has just the right sort of light flavour. If you use Chinese soy sauce, it may have a bit more of a savoury punch. And we're also going to stir in 120 millilitres of water. And that is it for our mitarashi sauce. I'm mixing all the ingredients off the heat at this point, by the way. Now let's pop this on a medium heat and we're going to cook it until it's thick and translucent. So we're going to stir, stir, stir so there aren't going to be any lumps until we have a nice, thick, translucent, dark, glossy sauce. There we go, it's done. It takes a while to get going but once it starts to darken it turns very fast and so keep stirring and don't worry. And that is that done. Right, last thing we need to do is grill our dango. 
just adding a little bit of vegetable oil to my pan and heating it. While this heats up, let's skewer our dago. Ooh, shiny. Hello. Now you notice my hands and the skewer I'm about to use are wet because these are sticky. So we're going to pick up a dango. We're going to spear it just like this, right through the center. And we're going to do that with the rest. We're going to try and get three per skewer. There we go. I'm actually going to take the little leaf decoration bead off for this next bit. And once the oil is hot, I'm going to place them in just like this. And we're just going to toast them for a minute or two on each side, but not for too long. Alternatively, you can also give them a blast with a cook's blowtorch. And I'd actually recommend doing this or putting them under the grill if you don't have a good non-stick pan, because they are very sticky. And then last of all, of course, what you want to do is spoon on liberally that lovely sweet and salty sauce. Absolutely amazing. Wow, look at the beautiful glossy sheen on those. Absolutely stunning. I also did it this style. Sometimes in Japan you can get them in little canes and little cups you can dip your mitarashi dango in. I couldn't find a skinny enough cup so my little measuring cup had to do. I thought this was the safer way for me to consume this <laughs> in front of the camera because if you've seen a couple of my recipe videos by now you know I have a very bad habit of tipping the plate to try and show you guys on whatever's on the plate, sliding off the plate. Here at least that eliminates that margin for error. As you can see, I am racing against time until the sun comes and blinds me, so I'm going to take a bite right now. Cheers. Those dumplings are ridiculously tender. If it would have just been like a traditional mochi that's made with water and glutinous rice flour, it would have a bit more give to it in the mochi. But because we've kneaded in that tofu, it's almost creamy in consistency while still having that lovely chewy bounce that mochi does. And of course, you've got that salted caramel sauce as well with the soy sauce and the sugar. Beautiful. Goodness me, that gave me flashbacks of when I saw King Kakuji in Kyoto. And after seeing that wonderful golden building, it is crazy, you need to see it by the way. I'd come to the end of it and there were loads of food trucks selling various goodies, and one of them was freshly made mitabashi dango. And I was just chilling out and I ate my stick of dango and I was just so happy. Beautiful scenery, beautiful culture and history, beautiful food. I can't wait to do it all again, this time properly with a good amount of time there. Not just Kyoto, I'll be in Tokyo and Osaka as well. So there you go, mitarashi dango. I hope you give it a try. You saw how easy it was. It just takes a little bit of time to whip up. And best of all, if you make a bigger batch of them, you can actually freeze those dumplings before you cook them. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you'll join me next Wednesday for my next one. Get the full written recipe on my blog, tashcakes.com. Follow me on Instagram, I'm tashcakes.taste. And find me on TikTok too. I'm also tashcakes, but my handle is food and slow motion. You can find me either way. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to see more. Give this video a like if you'd like to help other people find it. Comment down below if you'd like me to make anything in particular. And I'll see you guys next time. Be good, be nice and have a good week. Got some matcha here as well.